Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Creepy Halloween Special Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds. It's by Travis Drake and Tim Eller and it is a one, two, or three player game. In the game Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds you're trying to build a pumpkin patch with super scary different types of pumpkins or scoring points when you place cards down you can choose to place them from your hand or from this special batch area and basically you'll be moving crows around to protect certain cards so other players can't play on them the patch is going to grow and as soon as one pumpkin reaches full maturity which i believe is number eight the cinderella pumpkin that is when the game will end players will have their total scores and whoever has the most is the winner it's a fairly simple game with you know a pretty small box and it is a game in which you will be taking a look at right now down below I'll show you how to play the game and then I'll tell you what I think about it so here we have pumpkin patch bad seeds and everything included in the game including the little box that will fit everything in it this is going to be a deck of cards a hand of three for each player the basic setup along with this basic area here this is a point scoring track which goes from 1 to 20 along with little uh, cute pumpkin meeples that will go across this track here and the scarecrow card for single player games to begin setup it's fairly simple start with a three here place two twos and then three ones on top of them in this specific order then go ahead and take four seedling cards that all have ones on them and place them up down left and right of the baby boo card which is a three then go ahead and take each of these little crows here and place them on the left and right card. Shuffle the rest of the cards up into this deck and then deal out three to each player. And that is pretty much the setup for the game. Uh, when you're playing one player, follow the rules in the book along with this card here. Two players is just like this, but each player is randomly assigned a crow. And then in three players, no one owns the crows and you can move either one. So to begin the game, let's just simply choose a first player. And the first player, we'll go ahead and start with this guy here. He'll look at his hand of cards. Now, on your turn, you can choose to do one of two things. You can go ahead and play a card from the top of this stack here, or one card from your hand. The rules are fairly simple, though. You must place a card uh, on top of another card if it is not a one, or um, uh, as well as not on a crow. These crows block the areas in which players can play certain cards. So in this instance right now, he can simply play any seedlings he wants that are adjacent. So simply placing a seedling here, 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 here. Um, and that will score him points or he can play a two on a one this four on a three here or this two on a one here as well he happens to have a two so he could place this here if he wants to but that's only going to score him one point per continuous orange pumpkin so right now i think the best move for him will be to simply place this seedling right there scoring him two points we'll go ahead and remove this green so we're only playing with two players and he'll be the orange player afterwards he can go ahead and discard any cards he doesn't want from his hand and draw up to three cards then he will get to choose his crow, which will be this orange one here, and place it on any other card that doesn't already occupy a crow. So he'll go ahead and place that card just there. The next player is then going to go ahead and take his hand, look at what he's got. He's got some Jacko Littles. It's actually not so bad. And he will go ahead and decide to hold on to these and simply play a seedling from this stack over here. That's going to score him two points as well. And then he can go ahead and simply choose to discard any of these he wants. I think he likes a lot of these cards. So I think he'll actually keep these for now. Then he's going to go ahead and move his crow. And he can move his crow anywhere he wants on the board. Maybe he'll move it over here. Then right back to the first player again. He's going to go ahead and look at his hand of cards. So he has a four here now. One point per sequential pumpkin. So if he played this here, the in order, if this was a four and there was a three, two, and a one here, he gets score up to four points. It's pretty powerful. But unfortunately, no sequential pumpkins for him. So maybe I'll simply go ahead and play this two right here. That's one point per continuous orange pumpkin. There's only one there, so he's only going to score one point. And so orange will move up one. In that case, he played from his hand, so he'll simply get to choose to discard any of these he wants and then draw up to three. Then he's going to go ahead and move his crow. Maybe he'll move his crow over here to protect that. Once again, this player's turn, and it will continue. So you get the idea of the game. Once this pile runs out, when there's no more of these cards left, you're going to be playing cards from your hand, and if you can't, you're going to just go ahead and discard and move the crow. Basically, the game will continue, and you're going to be scoring points along this track up until the point in which there is an eight pumpkin. So there's a three here. I'll just show you all the ones different do. Uh, this is a blaze. It gets one point per sequential, which I already showed you. There is a five here. That is a Gooligan, which lets you move any plot and then score that plot's ability. 
So in this case, if you move this guy over here, it'd score you two points as a seedling. Then you got this guy here, which is a warty goblin, which lets you move either crow and score three points as well. So you can move, if you're orange, you can move this guy here. At the end of your turn, you can move this guy here. It gives you a little bit of control, along with three points straight up, which is pretty good. Uh, then we got the six over here, so let's go ahead and place down a seven. And that one is one point per adjacent and, adjacent and diagonal plot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty good for that one. And the final one there is Cinderella. Five points for the player who plays that, and the game ends, and whoever is farthest along this track is the winner. Plots can get rather big, and there's some other cards in here that will let you recycle certain cards. So, for instance, if I had a crook neck, I can go ahead and recycle a one, two, or three plot. This is a two plot. Place this here and get two points. And I think there's even another one as well. There's more seedlings you can find in here. And then we got a red curry here, recycling a seedling, and you get one point per card in the row. So if I recycle that, one, two, three points. And that is the idea of the game Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds. Pretty simple if you can look at it, but quite a bit of strategy, and I'll explain up above. So let's go ahead and talk about Pumpkin Patch Bad Seeds. This is a strategic card placement game that plays up to three players. In a single player game, it has a solitaire-like feel in which you're trying to score a certain amount of points based on how you play your cards. A two player game comes down to a thinky head-to-head -head game where you're doing your best to utilize your crow to protect your spaces that you don't want your opponent to play on, as well as you're gonna get messed over. There's certain seedlings that will do certain things that prevent certain things from happening, improving certain things from hap uh, to happen, and so on and so forth. Uh, and in a three-player game, it gets a little more wild. There's more stuff that can go on. The plots generally will get a little larger, and people will have a lot more placement, I suppose. Uh, this game is an excellent two-player game. I really, really enjoyed it, specifically at two players. The, th the thematic element of this game in which you're building this haunted pumpkin patch is really, really cool. It does an excellent job of that. The artwork on this game is fantastic. I am a really big fan of the artwork for this game. All of the different pumpkins are very unique, very spooky and fun. They're also very kid friendly, uh, so you can kind of have a nice little Halloween treat for your kids. They maybe on the on the darker side, I suppose, where they're a little like ah, kind of gross, I suppose, but still fun. Uh, the game itself can be rather quick and simple. We're just placing down cards one, two, three, four, all the way to eight. Game over but there's a deep amount of strategy involved in the game, which will turn some people off and make some people more interested in learning more. And the reason I say that is because when you're playing certain cards, you have to be aware of what your opponent is likely going to play, what cards are in their hand. If you're good at counting cards in this game, it's likely you'll know what your opponent has in their hand, probably by the middle section of the game, because of the cards you chose to discard or he or she chose to discard. There's elements in the game where there's some luck as to you may not have the specific card you want, you may have discarded the card previously, or just hasn't shown up yet. There is a certain amount of cards in the deck, and it tells you what types of cards are in the deck based on the number here, like a blaze, there's six of them here. The ghoul again is five, and then the big the big Cinderella pumpkin, that's two of them. And of course, the larger the number, the better the score will be for you. So five points right here, game over as soon as you play the Cinderella pumpkin. And when people play that seven, that's when the game's there's a, there's a fight to end the game, right? Specifically, if you're not far enough on the track. Additionally, if there's a tie, then the player who played the Cinderella Pumpkin is, is going to be the winner of the game. Uh, overall, this is a wonderful little card game. And for the right price, I think if it's about 10, 15 bucks, this would instantly sell me for a Halloween game. It's definitely good for, you know, the couples head-to-head -head competition and for the, the fun element of the three player as well. I, I really like this game. And it's the first little Halloween game I've gotten to review. So you guys get to take a look at our first spooky game of the uh, October 2019 year. Uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. I am just, uh, for me, I am a huge fan of the art. There is a good amount of thought process in the game, and it's small and condensed and good for travel. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of negatives, like I said, it just a little, it can be a little too thinky. There's definitely a lot of competitive nature to the game, but the scores are always extremely close regardless of what you're playing and when you're playing it you can usually get a fairly close score and of course the more you play the better you're going to get at this specific type of strategy game go ahead and take a look down below if you want to take a look at pumpkin patch bad seats and let me know what you think down below in the comment section whether you want to pick up this game or not i think you guys would be very impressed with at least the artwork of the game and the style of the theme of this type of halloween game not a lot of pumpkin patch games really really cool